My friend is here. Bill Lockwood, Pastor Bill Lockwood, is here. Uh, he's with American Liberty, um, with BillLockwood.com, American, American Liberty with BillLockwood.com. He's a radio host, teacher, pastor of Our Park Church of Christ, and the author of Ezekiel, The Watchman of Israel. And so many things I want to talk with Bill about today. Bill, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Jesse. How are you today? All is well, sir. How are you? I'm very good. Good good to be with you again. Thank you. Is it cold in Texas? It is. It's cold right here. It is about 25 degrees this morning. That's cold for me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cold for me, too. Yeah. I can barely handle it when it goes down to 50 in California. That's right. When it gets below 60, we're, you know, I get, I get chilled. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stuff to talk about today, Bill. Yes, and, sir. And uh, one is the uh, environmentalists. Uh, they say something about global warming. They're trying to bring that back now. This woman in uh, New York, this uh, new congresswoman, uh, Otesio Cortez, or whatever her name is, <laughs> she's into that. And in uh, around the country, the weather seemed to have its own life, its own thing. It get cold, it get hot, it get warm, it snow, it doesn't snow. What do you think about the left bringing that up again? Well, you know what? Um, uh, Ocasio-Cortez was simply re uh, repeating the United Nations. They had a, a conference in, uh, in, in Poland in December in which they— uh, you know, they came out very, very boldly, and they were talking about uh, transforming the entire world's economy because of the e extreme danger of climate change. And they even said, we only have about 15 more years to live uh, in this kind of world that we have. And so that's <laughs> where she was picking up the 15 years from. That sounded kind of nutty coming from her, but that actually came out of the United Nations conference. It was uh, called the, uh, the COP24 conference. And uh, so they had a lot of... Uh, a big wigs from around the world, all of them socialists, who basically stated that we have to transform the entire economy. Uh, number two, we need to uh, take uh, 100, uh, over $100 billion, that's billion with a B, from the Western world and send it over to third world countries uh, in reparations for all that we've done and the damage to the climate that we've caused and to help them uh, restart their economies and so forth. So, uh, And also then, of course, uh, change the way that we live. <clears throat> that is just to absolutely change everything about the way that we manage our lives. When I was growing up, I never imagined that one day we would have the type of people we have in government today. And especially on the Democrat side, I'm surprised yeah. how weak the right of Republicans are, too. But on the Democrat side, they have elected a bunch of nutcases, <laughs> up, just apparently illogical crazy mentalities. How did that happen? Well, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, I, I was fortunate enough, Jesse, to grow up in a family that uh, where my, uh, my, my parents, uh, my grandparents are uh, very studious on uh, biblical issues and recognized uh, that socialism uh, is against biblical values and saw that we were going in the socialist uh, direction from about the 1920s on. And so, uh, uh, my grandmother, would war I mean, she had warned us back then. She said, this is coming, and it's coming in your day, and, uh, you know, we're going to be in a socialistic nation the way it looks. Um, so, uh, you know, I kind of grew up, I cut my teeth on some of that kind of material, and I, they would have me read materials and that kind of ma uh, that kind of thing, um, whether it be about the United Nations or about the socialists uh, from FDR and even back to Woodrow Wilson and uh, the socialistic plans they had for America. So, um, I'm not surprised. I, I am a little bit uh, shocked that it would come so quickly, but I think that has happened uh, primarily because of Barack Obama. You know, he came into office and uh, he basically is yeah, a socialist yeah. and uh, Marxist, and uh, he really transformed the American, uh, the mind of people in America. So they kind of everybody's taking their, their covers off and their masks off and they're running with it now. And so are we going all the way with this or will it turn around with this country? I mean, you don't know for sure, I guess, but. Do you predict that we will become a socialist country? Well, I hope not, Jesse, but we already are, are really. We're already a socialist nation, uh, honestly. Uh, when we think about our federal budget, uh, the deficits that we have, and the federal budget uh, where we have 75 to 80 percent 
is wealth redistribution, whether we call it food stamps, whether we call it housing, Section 8 housing, whether we call it um, uh, assistance in schools, whether poor families, foods, uh, any, anything that you can think of, any assistance is really wealth redistribution. So we already are already on that track. Um, but now, of course, they're trying to take the whole medical, uh, the entire medical industry and turn it also into a socialistic nightmare as well. And if I, Kamala Harris gets her way, then that's exactly what will happen. I'm going to ask you about her, Kamala Harris. Um, I'm, I'm just stunned that the Democrats will even consider a person like that uh, who is just evil to the core. Then she doesn't have an honest bone in her body. And yet she's, and I think it's because she's black and female that she's becoming one of their uh, uh, favorite runners for the president. Why, I mean, what would happen if she get, it would be more Obama and even worse, I think. Oh, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, she's promised to take away our guns, to yeah. take away our freedom, the free market, to take away our cars, you know, because we're going to be taxed so heavily for uh, carbon emissions. Uh, she promises to take away uh, the housing that we have, the doctor, she take, promises to take away your doctor, uh, all of those things. And boy, that's, and then Democrats just love that. So um, that's that's where we are with it. That's, but basically social. But, you know, Jesse, it's important to note that the principles that they're following today were laid out long ago by Woodrow Wilson and FDR. They laid these things out when we changed our nation into a welfare state nation, which is basically what we are, then really there's no stopping it because the, the imagination of a, of a liberal is as far as they'll go. And how far is that? Well, it takes it all the way. So all we're, all we're arguing about at this point is how much, how much socialism we're going to have. And that's where we are. And the more we... Uh, accept the worse it get, the more they push for. So right. it's like it's like evil. If you allow evil to happen in your life, and you don't overcome it, it just get worse and worse until it destroys you. Right, and that's what's happening in our nation. You know, it's, we've already seen it erode the values of of American people. It's eroded the values of the black community, and minor, other minority communities. It simply eroded those values. And it does so over a period of time. That's why socialism always works. It just absolutely eats away. It corrodes the value system over a period of time because it is, an, is, it, it is a corrupt system and it is a system that is based upon theft, stealing. And that's when you, you can't have that and people benefit from that and, and at the same time maintain some, any kind of value system that is aligned with the Bible. I remember when black men were in charge we're leading the black family and the community and the schools and everything. Things were fine. We had little issues, you know, but men, uh, men and, and boys grew up working. They uh, were less likely to uh, have sex out of wedlock. They were less likely to leave their families. They built businesses and communities. And uh, there would be no way that socialism would come in uh, when those men were in control. And then once the men became weak under Lyndon B. Johnson, supported by the so-called civil rights movement, and they turned their families over to the government and to the corrupt leadership, women start, the black women start to take over and look like everything that could not get in prior, like homosexuality, abortion, welfare, all that came in when the women took over because the men were not allowed to happen. Look like I'm seeing the same thing happen to my country as the women are taking over. Everything that's evil and everything that's wrong is, is becoming the norm in our country. Am I seeing it wrong? No, I don't think you're seeing it wrong. I, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of good women, but at the same time, that that's right. When women take the leadership position in the home, for example, and raise the children. Uh, which is apart from God's plan, then we're going to have major problems. And that's not only happening in the home, that's happening in society, that's happening across the board. And we don't have strong male leadership. I've said for years, the lack of strong male leadership is really our demise in the home and the country. And we just don't have people that are standing up. I saw it go down that way in the black community, and it just got worse. And it still is getting worse as the black women are taking over. The churches are being destroyed. The schools yeah. are being destroyed. The playground are being destroyed. The paint is dropping off the homes. You can't even keep the paint on the house. 
So when you when you say there are good women, is there just something you need to say? Where are they? (laughs) (laughs) Well, no. Is there something you need to say so that you don't be attacked? Because I'm not (laughs) seeing the good women. Even the women on the Republican side, they tend to go liberal in times, you know, with certain things. Well, maybe so. I mean, you know, a lot of them do. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't need to say that, but <laughs> I, I do believe they're good women. Uh, Where that, are they? Well, I, <laughs> as far as uh, in, in the government is concerned. Yes. Well, I think Michelle Bachman, for example, who's no longer in the yes. government. With those, uh, she was a strong, and I think she was a great woman. Who and had, they uh, hated her. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They hated her completely. Uh, so, you know, there are women like that that I always appreciated. I did, too. I love that woman. You're absolutely right. I forgot about her because I haven't seen her in a long time. <laughs> but they don't make them like that anymore. Well, <laughs> well, that's right. There are not too many of them, are there? Are there any now? Oh, I, uh, I certainly hope that there are. I mean, I Do you I don't know, know of any? Well, I haven't scanned the politics as carefully as maybe I should, but uh, surely, surely there are some. You know, what I was going to say this also regarding your question um, about America being a Christian nation. My biblical question, is America yeah. the last Christian nation? I want to say, no, it's the first. It's the first Christian nation because it's the first nation that had any kind of uh, founding documents that were based upon biblical values. It's the first one. And I don't know that we're there still, but that's the way it was. And we didn't have, there's no other time in history where we, where we see that replicated. And so did other, did other Christians and nations come about as a result of America? Were there other Christian nations formed somewhere? Uh, well, there were a lot of nations that copied our Constitution, uh, primarily just the Constitution, not necessarily the Declaration of Independence, but um, we have to remember that um, the Declaration was one of the founding documents and reads really like a Christian manifesto. Uh, it, you know, speaks about God and the rights that men have, uh, all of these coming from God. That is something that is completely different than uh, any other nation in the history of mankind. Amazing. Except the Testament Israel. I'm glad that we were able to name one good woman. I would be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I will get a little nervous. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Last week, they passed an abortion so-called bill in New York, whereas even up until the ninth month, the last day, the last hour, if a woman is pregnant, she can have an abortion. And 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 it doesn't take a doctor to perform the so-called abortion. And if there's a botched abortion— at the ninth month, and the baby should come out alive, you can let the baby now die on the medical table. Mm-hmm. And when the uh, g- uh, the governor of New York signed that bill, the people were applauding about it. Mm-hmm. I was stunned. I was just shocked yeah. about that. How did we get to that? Why are we allowing that to happen? What is it about we the people that we're allowing that to happen? Well, you know, what this goes to the worldview of people and uh, what our worldview is, whether it's biblical-based and it's value based upon God's Word, or it's not. And this shows us that we have uh, a value system that is not rooted in, in the Bible at all. And that is so frequently the case. You know, I read a piece uh, several years ago, Jesse, by Walter Williams, who's a great columnist, and you probably know him and had him on your show probably. He's on my board, <laughs> board of director. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> All right. Well, he, he wrote a piece, and he, he said, you know, perhaps it's time for divorce. That is, those on the left are so far left, they're so far gone, they have a different worldview, a different value system. They don't believe that, that there's human dignity any more than the rocks and the dirt, which is basically what we have coming out of the UN right now regarding the environmental movement. He says, maybe it's time that those people are on that side of the aisle they just take their own uh, government and go their own way and divide this country up right now. Um, and I kind of think there's some wisdom in that, to tell you the truth, because people like uh, states like New York are not coming back. You know, Cuomo invited people that were pro-life to leave the state. You're not welcome here, is what he said. <laughs> You're not welcome here. Yeah. So if you if you have, and if you stand in the pulpit and preach these things, I suppose he's going to shut you down, or, or, or that will be, of course, the result that will come out from all of this. They're going to shut your mouth. So, you know, what, what do we do? 
I know and believe firmly that one of the reasons that this is happening is that over the last six to the seven years, and maybe longer, we have allowed the children of the lie to demoralize the people. Like everything that we know is raw is now in front of us, like so-called same-sex marriage, abortion, now transgender, men and women are living together without being married. They're having sex before marriage. Um, it's, it's not uncommon now that single men and women, no matter what their ages are, can have sex at home with their parents. They can bring kid, uh, other, you know, a, a, a boy can bring a girl in, or a girl can bring a boy in. They live with their parents, unmarried, having sex. It's everything that we knew to be wrong, and we would never allow it, is now being allowed. And as, and as you can see, they had to demoralize the people in order for these godless politicians and others to come into office. Well, not only are we allowing it, Jesse, we are subsidizing it. That's exactly what we pay for. That's what our tax money goes to subsidize, to support, and to continue in, in, an, in a godless fashion. You know, we have children all over the high schools that are having children yeah. and uh, children having children. And you know what? They don't have to pay anything for it. They don't even recognize that you have to pay for children. So they go out and have another one. They have another one. I am stuck with the bill. You're stuck with the bill. We subsidize it. We subsidize their housing. We subsidize their food. We subsidize their electricity. We subsidize their education. We subsidize the travel expenses. We subsidize everything about that. And they have no God. God put in place a a system that you're going to have to pay repercussions because of mistakes that you make. But we try to socialism just takes away that system and no longer allows the punishment to fall upon the people who actually commit those mistakes or make those mistakes. Yeah. yeah. And instead, the people that are good and uh, wholesome, we're paying the bill. Amazing. We're absolutely putting it. And so we're subsidizing everything here. We're running out of time here. I have one more question for you. Um, on the Democratic side, they have decided that they are not going to elect another white man. Yeah. They, they have made that under Barack Obama. They, it, that's when it all started, it seemed. It may have started before that. But no white man would be elected, especially a straight white man. Um, we saw where White boys were attacked in Washington, D.C. last week. School kids for yeah, wearing mega, my, uh, mega hats. And the boys were attacked by the media and everyone instead of the so-called Indian and the, uh, the, uh, right. the black group that was there attacking them. What is going on with that? You know what? This is what racial politics does to us. And when you have a media that is so against the idea of Christianity or anybody who names the name of Christ, uh, you know what? This is exactly what's going on. They they perceive uh, Catholicism and the Catholic Church as as New Testament Christianity, which it is not. But nevertheless, that's how the media perceives it. And when they see it that way, when therefore that's why they they hate those boys and everything that they do is wrong. So that's that's exactly how it's going to be. It's not because they're simply from the north and so forth, and not because they were wearing MAGA hats necessarily, but because they named the name of Christ in what they were doing. And boy, that, that's where they, the hatred comes. And, and, and you're and, right. And because they were Christian boys, they were white, and they support President Trump, all that combined together. But in oh, America yeah. today, it's not okay to be white anymore. No, not okay to be white, not okay to be Christian. That's right. Are you afraid as a white man, conservative, straight, Christian, white man, are you afraid of being white now? No, I'm not afraid of being white. I, I do fear for uh, my children and grandchildren who grow up in, uh, in, especially in the cities where they're going to face this kind of thing uh, with a lot, more, uh, a lot more anger against them than I have. You know, I'm kind of in a, an isolated area, to tell you the truth, uh, in this part of Texas. You know, we don't have... Uh, quite that um, dynamic going on. But, you know, well, there's a lot of places in the country that I'm, I'm fearful for 
the people that are coming out, uh, my, my children, grandchildren, and other people, you know, the next generation, I, that I, I am fearful for them. But if you guys don't do something about it, white people don't do something about it, it's going to soon become like South Africa, because when the people of color take over the government, they're yeah. going after white people. They're going to take their stuff. Oh, yeah. They're going to kill them. They're going to rape them, rob them. They're going to take their property without compensation. And white people won't be able to do anything about it. Why not fight now to stop it from getting to that? Well, I'm not saying don't fight now. We need to stand up. We absolutely need to. I mean, we don't even have uh, many people speaking out on the issue, let alone uh, shouldering a musket at this point. We, you know, people are not even talking out about it. And it is frightening. I, you know, I am, I'm fearful of the fact of that. But I've been seeing that uh, for all of my adult life, Jesse, yeah, yeah. that men have not been leaders, spiritually speaking, in the family, in the churches, and it has been a, a, a disaster. You see churches everywhere wherein families are led by a woman, primarily, spiritually speaking, yeah. and, and just kind of tags along, goes to church. What is that about? That shows that the men are not taking leadership roles. We need men to stand up and be men. And men are afraid of women. They are, uh, all they, <laughs> they're, guess, fra- they're afraid to correct them. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to disagree. All the thing they want now is for women to give them sex and be a mama to them. You know, it might be uh, something like uh, the Republican Party. You know, honestly, the wall should have been built uh, within the last two years when the Republicans were in charge. Yes. Why didn't yes. they do it? Why didn't they press the battle? You know, when the Democrats took over with Obama and they had a supermajority, what did they do? They crammed socialistic medicine right down our ungrateful throats. Yeah. And, you know, but we, they just absolutely took, took the bull uh, by the horns. But now when we had a majority, no, no, we didn't do anything. The Republicans didn't move. And uh, so now we have Democrats in control. And now all of a sudden the big fight's on because now Trump wants the wall. Well, you know what? We, we blew it. The there. wall so- is going up come hell or high water. <laughs> I, will, I, hope, I hope the wall does go up it but, will uh, it will bill tell the folks how to get to your website listen to your show we have about a minute okay yeah thank you jesse okay well the website is american liberty with bill lockwood.com and the radio show is called exactly the same it comes out of wichita falls on news talk 1290 a.m dial that's the 11 o'clock a.m saturdays and then on Sunday afternoons at 5 o'clock at a public nebula at an AM dial station as well. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me on your show. We'll talk soon. Say hello to everybody for me. Yes, sir. Lord bless you, Jesse. You too, buddy. Thank you.